Hi everyone. I am Alex from FR. To my right, you can see all recorded earthquakes with a magnitude of 4 and higher that happened in Europe over the last 1000 years. As you can see, they are widespread and numerous. And while most are too small to be felt or cause damaging effects, severe events occur periodically. Now, there isn't anything that could have been done to prevent these earthquakes. But the right measures can significantly reduce their impacts. That's why, seismologists, geologists, engineers and many other experts across Europe join under the umbrella of IFER, to gain an improved understanding of earthquakes in Europe. They do that by advancing earthquake hazard and risk assessments, or as we call them, earthquake risk and hazard models. But more about that later on. Let's start at the beginning. What is earthquake hazard? And what do we mean when we speak of earthquake risk? A hazard is something that can cause harm. It can be many things. Such as, severe weather, cars on a busy road or wild animals. Risk, on the other hand, is the likelihood of something harming you. So, it is for example more likely that you will be attacked by the bear in the middle of the forest compared to being attacked when you are on a boat in the middle of a lake. Unless, the bear is a really good swimmer. But that's bears. We, the people working on the European earthquake hazard and risk models care more about earthquakes. So, in that context, earthquake hazard describes what level of ground shaking is expected due to future earthquakes. For point A, earthquake hazard will be higher than point B because of the underlying seismic activity, often associated with an active fault. When we assess earthquake hazard, we take into account the following factors. Geological and plate tectonic settings, historic and contemporary records of earthquake size and locations, as well as continuous recordings of earthquakes effects. All of which are combined using advanced modeling techniques. Let's look at an example in Europe. The region in central Italy has a higher hazard level compared to Denmark in the north. This is mainly due to the underlying plate tectonic setting, with high deformation rates in the south, resulting in more frequent earthquakes occurring in southern Europe. And this is what the earthquake hazard map looks like for Europe. For more details pause the video and scan this code with your phone or find the link below this video. This might explain where the ground shaking is expected. But whether or not it hurts people or damages the built environment around them depends on additional factors. Which brings us to earthquake risk. When there are human-made structures present, such as buildings, train lines, or other infrastructure like bridges. That's where most earthquake risk originates. Which is why, when we talk about risk, we gather and evaluate information about the following factors. Ground shaking hazard, local soil conditions, the density, location, and value of structures, as well as the vulnerability of those structures. By combining all these components we can determine the likelihood of people being harmed and damages caused at a certain location. If we look at Reykjavik and Athens, two European cities with similar levels of earthquake hazard, we see that the risk is much higher in Athens. This is due to its higher density of buildings and people, and the much older, more vulnerable building stock. And this is what the earthquake risk map looks like for Europe. For more details pause the video and scan this code with your phone or find the link below. Thus, practically speaking, the risk model can help decisions to be made about where we need to reinforce structures. For example, if we have a building here and it has not been built to withstand certain levels of ground shaking in case of an earthquake, one could decide to reinforce it with braces. This would be one possible way of mitigating, or reducing, the risk. And in a broader context. What are the benefits of these new models? Firstly, we can only prepare for what we are aware of. Information on earthquake hazard and risk, therefore, help tailor mitigation measures to prevent economic and human losses and, consequently, make communities across Europe more resilient. Secondly, Europe is highly tectonically diverse and so is its earthquake potential. Our models have been developed with a harmonized approach and thus help remove differences due to country-specific approaches. Hazard and risk information can thus be compared across national borders. And lastly, national models, when available, are always best suited to inform local decision-makers. 
However, many European countries have not updated their seismic hazard and risk models in many years. Thus, Europe's hazard and risk models can help as a first step. This is further facilitated by the fact that all underlying datasets are openly accessible to everyone. Such an open data policy enables others to test the models, identify gaps in the data, and improve them for future models. For a better preparedness for earthquakes across Europe, 